Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I will show you how to um, add a license to your MetaTrader 4 or 5 Expert Advisor so you can ship it anywhere without yeah, ha having to be afraid that someone will steal your strategy or resell it or just multiply it and give it away to friends or family or whatever. So um, I talked about this several times in the comments and in live streams, I think the recommended way or the one that I would recommend is to simply use the MQL5 market. It is a great platform which can also work as a distribution um, platform for your product and MQL5 does the licensing but of course I mean uh, the platform will take a 20% cut of all of your revenues so it might not be perfect for you or maybe you just don't want to use it so in this case you can also add some easy code to your program it's just like one or two lines of code to make it safe so nobody can give it away and uh, yeah, just uh, copy it and uh, yeah, uh, sell it, for example. So we will do this um, with an example expert advisor. I will use the trend follower that I created in the last programming tutorial on this channel. But you can use any expert advisor you like. The process um, can be used for, for any program, pretty much. So I would recommend to add the code in the onInit function. So first of all, if you do not have a onInit function in your, in your code, you would have to create it. So let me write the onInit function real quick. Um, but in most cases, you will find the onInit function in your code anyways. So you don't really have to, have to create it. So in the onInit function, there are Two things I want to show you. First of all, um, check if user is allowed to use the program. And another check will be check if the license um, period expired or the testing period. These are two typical use cases. And I will show you the easiest way to do it. So I know there are complex ways that are probably a little bit better but in most cases the way that I would show you works totally fine and if someone is able to um, break through this method and if someone is able to like decompile your code and everything um, yeah he, he might be able to um, rewrite or re, um, recreate your strategy anyway so the easiest way to check if a user is allowed to use your program is to just implement the um, account number of your customer's account in the source code. So in this case, you can see my account number in the upper left corner. This is a demo account, but it doesn't really matter. It works with demo and live accounts. And I could hard code this um, number into my program. So what I can do here is I can check if, or first of all, I will get the account number <clears throat> of um, the account where this EA is currently running. So we can say account number is equal to account info integer. And the account info integer is a function that can be used whenever you want a integer information um, from the account that's, that is currently logged in. So if you have a look at this in the MQL5 reference, you can click on this enum account info integer and you can see all the information that you can receive using this function and the first one is account underscore login and this is the one that we will use here so just write account underscore login and this will give us the account number of the currently um, uh, the, the current active uh, account so if I compile the program <clears throat> and yeah you can see here there's one warning because uh, the account info integer function uh, returns a long value yeah I mean so we could just make this a long variable even though most of these account numbers would fit into an integer data type I think um, so let's go back to the program and let me run the program so I'm using this trend follower program and if you have a look at the experts journal here and if I activate the program you will see that it will now print the count number of the account that is currently logged in in the experts journal and this is such a great way of using the account number as a license because this is a way that you can really make sure that a program is only used in one specific account so if you plan to sell this program you can just ask your customer what account number he wants to use or on what account he wants to use the program then you can get the account 
number of the currently logged in account and you can compare it to the account number that the customer told you. So we could have another uh, account number, uh, account customer, for example. And here you just, you simply place the number that the, that the customer told you. And all you have to do now is you have to check if account uh, customer is equal to account number. And in this case, you can print something like function um, license verified. And if these account numbers are not matching, you can do something like print uh, function. Um, you can write license is invalid or something like this. And then you can add extra remove and return init failed because this will remove the expert advisor from the chart and this will say that the initialization failed so you cannot use the EA. So you can see if I compile the program again, oh, and I forgot a semicolon somewhere. Wait, it has to be like this. <clears throat> so right now I just added this uh, part this piece of code and you can see if I go back to the to the program and if I now want to run the program again, the trend follower, you can see I can drag and drop it here. I click on OK and you can see license is invalid. But what happens if I add the correct number here? So let me have a look here. It's 50, 69, 50, 69 and... 1890, 1890. So if I do it like this, if I compile it now, it should see that these numbers are matching. So if I want to run it again, you can see it now says license verified. And the program is still running on the chart and it will function just fine. I mean, if I change the time frame, it will change, uh, it will check the license every single time. Um, I mean, you can do it like this, but you could also. Um, Yeah, I mean, you can you can just do it like this. It's not really a problem if it uh, verifies the license every time you change the time frame. But yeah, okay, I will show you a way how to prevent this. You can add a static variable. Uh, I usually name it is initialized. And then um, you check if is in it function is uh, if this is in it variable is false. In this case, you do all the license checks here. And then is in it will be set to true like this. So if you do it like this, and let me show it to you again, it will only check the license once if the program is activated for the first time. And if I change the time frame now, it's not checked again. So you could add this piece of code to prevent um, that the program checks the license every time the time frame is changed or the on init function is called. Okay, so this is one way. Um, so what, 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 do, what do you have to do now? Mm, like before you sell your program or before you ship it to your customer, you just have to ask for the customer account number, um, customer account number, and then you have to add it here. So you have to replace this number with the account number of your customer. Afterwards, you compile it and then you go to you can right click this, open containing folder, and then you will see that um, this executable file, this trend follow follower.ex5 file, or whatever your program is named, is the file that you can now ship to your customer. So you can take this file, uh, you could copy it, for example, or you can just um, say that you want to rename it. Uh, like this, so you know this file is now licensed for this specific account number. And then you send to your customer, you can send this .ex5 file and only this file, this is important, never send the mq5 file because the mq5 file contains the source code. So if you send this file, the customer will be able to just remove the license check and it doesn't make sense. So just send this file and if you want to create another uh, if you have another customer, you can just add the account number of the of the next customer and then you compile it again. 
So you will create another file. So you can see now I have this trend follower file that I just created. I could add the, the, the other um, account number here. So you can see this one works only um, for one account and this works for another account. So let me check, uh, let me show it to you again in the, in the um, program here. So if I refresh this, you will see I now have these two executables here. And if I run the program that I compiled, um, yeah, uh, um, that I just compiled before with the wrong account number. So this is not the account number that I'm logged in currently. So if I try to run this, you will see the license is invalid. But if I use the correct account number, this executable was compiled with the correct account number for this account, you will see this one works. So this is a way of, yeah, how to how you can easily use the account number to license a program. And if you want to give your customer like three licenses, you would have to add uh, three account numbers. And that's like the, the really easy progress. And then before you ship your program, you just ask your customer for the account number, you add it into the code, and then the program only works for this specific account number. So now I want to check, uh, want to show you the uh, the second check that you can do in the on init, which is a um, testing period. So let me comment this out here. And now let's have a look at the testing period. So you could check if time current is smaller than, and then you just have the expiration time. And the easiest format or way to do so is to use the string to time function and then just add any time here. So you could say 2023.3.30 30, so it expired yesterday, and this is already enough. I mean, you could also add a time, like 12 o'clock or something, but you could also work with the date only. It's up to you. And then you can say, if this is okay, so then you can say, <clears throat> demo is still active. And if it is not okay, so if the the, the current server time is already behind this uh, or after this um, time that you add here, then you can say something like print function uh, demo is expired. Expired like this. And then you also want to remove the program, of course. So expert remove and you can return init failed because the initialization failed. So if I compile the program again, you should see that now if I try to run the program, trend follower, so if I try to run it, you can see demo is expired. But if I if I just change um, it to the current day and let's say 15 o'clock, we should be able to run the program because um, the, the server time um, is still like before the point of time that I added into the code. So you can see these are two like super easy ways to license your program. You can have a demo um, time period where everyone can use the program. You can um, add the account number and um, this will prevent your customers from just like copying and selling the program to everyone else because it only works on one account number. And again, I mean, there might be better ways. You could add some kind of like server request where you can update the account numbers on your own server and everything, but this is a little bit more complex. And um, <clears throat> this is the easiest way that everyone can implement in a matter of like five minutes or so. <laughs> so yeah, make use of this. I hope this was useful. And also you can, you can test a lot of other quiz, uh, quiz things. For example, you could use the account info, uh, info integer to check if it is a um, demo account, I think. Trade mode. Oh, it's the trade mode. Um, yeah, so you can check the info ac uh, account trade mode and you can check if it is account Hmm. Wait, what's the trade mode? Account trade mode demo. Um, so if it's a demo account, you can say <clears throat> you want to uh, allow trading on this account. 
uh, trading on demo is okay. And if it's not a demo account, <clears throat> you want to remove the program. But yeah, this um, I used this before and I think it doesn't always work if the broker um, not allowed. If the broker has a different, um, if, if the broker didn't set it up correct on on his server, it might not work. But yeah, you can see you can you can do a lot of different uh, and cool stuff using this account info integer function. Okay, so I hope this short tutorial was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have questions about this in the comment section below. And um, yeah, as always, if you have video recommendations or um, any. Any suggestions, also drop a comment below. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great time and good trades. Bye-bye.